Today's workout is the intermediate workout from my diastasis recti repair plan. This workout was going to build on the beginner workout from the same plan, so make sure you've done that one before moving on to this one. It's perfect for anyone who's postpartum or who's recently had a baby, including C-section mamas. All you need is a mat. Let's get started. Hey mamas, welcome to our intermediate workout for our diastasis recti repair plan. So if you haven't done the beginner workout yet, go back and do that one several times before moving to this one. We are gonna start with that TVA, transverse abdominis and diaphragmatic breathing. Come over onto your hands and knees, hands under shoulders, knees under hips. We're gonna take a deep breath in, fill that belly up with air, deep breath out, deflate the balloon and repeat in and out. Pulling that belly button in toward your spine, relaxing the glutes, relaxing your neck and shoulders. Keep going. Try to empty that belly. We want full rib cage expansion, full belly expansion, chin tucked, eye gaze just slightly in front of your fingertips. Now I want you to try not to clench anything besides engaging those deep core muscles, those pelvic floor muscles. Try not to clench your neck, glutes, shoulders, or jaw or face anywhere. Sometimes we compensate by clenching or creating tension where there doesn't need to be tension. And relax here. We're gonna move on to a bird dog. So in that first beginner workout, we did alternating arms with the legs. We're gonna do them together now. So front arm, back leg lifts off the floor. Place it down, switch. So you're moving your arm and your leg simultaneously now. If that's too intense, you go back to the beginner workout version where we do the arms and legs separately. But this one, when you lift, I want you to pull your belly button in. Remember, zip up that core, belly pulls in and up. Thumb goes up on the arm, about shoulder level. Toes can be flexed or pointed, leg is hip level, no higher. We wanna to try to maintain balance, and again, moving simultaneously allows the core to function optimally in this movement. And again, we want those shoulders directly over your wrist here. If you're shifting back, you're going to lose your balance and it's also going to take that work out of your core. Let's do one more, make it even and rest. Okay, we're gonna move on to that supine marching. So carefully roll over onto your back. We did this one in the first beginner workout. Belly button pulled in, low back toward the floor. We're gonna lift the front leg up, lightly tap the toe down. Back leg goes up and tap. So knee over hip, light tap on the toe. When you lower the foot, I want you to think, don't make any noise. That's gonna allow you to put that pressure in your core, control the movement so you're not just falling down. And something that helps me is turning my hands so palms are facing up, that way I'm not gripping the floor with my hands. That pressure is in my core. I know to keep it there. You wanna make it a little more challenging, you can take the leg a little further away from you as you lower and then just pull it back into reset. Nice and tight through the core, last one. And rest. Okay, we're gonna move on to a reverse march now. So just like we did in the previous workout, knees come over hips, low back presses toward the floor. Again, knees directly over hips, lower front leg down and lift, back leg goes down. Nice and quiet on those toe taps. Shins parallel to ceiling. Palms up for even more pressure in that core. We're really gonna think about engaging those muscles. And when we engage the deep core, we're working things from the inside out. So like I said in the previous workout, the deep core muscles are transverse abdominis and pelvic floor are all connected. We've gotta repair that before we repair the superficial muscles. That's our six pack, our rectus abdominis. That's where that ab separation happened. But those are the superficial muscles. So we gotta get the deeper stuff if we're gonna work on the exterior, you know what I'm saying? So that's what we're gonna do with these exercises today. It's about the foundation, not just about how things look on the outside. We gotta do it all. And we're going to with these exercises. Okay, we're gonna do bent leg hip circles. So taking the knees back over your hips, we're gonna take them down, around, and up. Down, around, and up. About the size of a bicycle wheel. 
feet come down first, legs are together here, then slowly separate them, make a little circle, bring them back over your hips. And again, we don't wanna rest here. We wanna keep those knees over the hips and allow that core pressure to stay on. Now you're gonna feel it in your thighs a little bit too. That is normal. Tight quads plus you're using your quads to control this movement. If it's too intense, take a break and be sure to stretch afterwards. That'll help with that tension or foam roll doing some myofascial release before and after will also help with that leg burn you feel. Might even hear some hip cracking here, some hip popping. I don't know if you can hear that. It'll probably get cut out, but rest here, but they're, they're popping. Okay, we're gonna move on to a glute bridge with abduction. So just like we took those legs out and away, we're gonna do that in a bridge. So lift the hips up, knees go out, in and down. Take them up, out, just a couple inches out and in, driving out of your heels. You can lift your toes. You can see I'm doing that here. You don't have to have your toes glued to the mat, especially when you do that abduction, you're gonna find your feet naturally move a bit and that is totally fine. Just make sure you're not totally rolling onto the outside edges of your feet. You wanna keep your heels down. And that's gonna control that abduction as well. Outer hip muscles get tight and weak during pregnancy and postpartum. So that's why we do a lot of these abductions and that just means taking your legs away from your body. And the glutes are the biggest muscle in our core. So if we want to repair things from the inside out, we have to put a big focus on our glutes. And rest here. Okay, we're gonna move to a glute bridge. This time we're gonna walk the feet out and in, alternating the foot we lead with. So hips are gonna stay up. We're gonna go front leg, back leg, front leg, back leg. Switch leading legs. And we keep walking out, out, in, in. Trying to keep the hips as still as possible. Be conservative with how far out you walk because we wanna maintain that height, that range of motion for the bridge. Nice and controlled. Not very fast on this one. I know you could move fast, but in all these exercises, I want you to think less about the amount of reps, less about the speed, more about the control. Do you feel controlled? Do you feel like you can do these exercises? Not necessarily with ease, but you're, again, in control. I guess that's the best word I know to use, but that's how I want you to feel. Rest. We're gonna move on now to a side plank with a rotation. So come onto your forearm, bend the bottom knee, reach the top hand up. We're gonna tuck that top arm under, reaching for your ribs, and then lift and reach to the ceiling. Let's repeat that. Tuck, pull your belly button in, reach for those ribs, and lift. So you're supporting through that bottom knee, and then you're supporting through your forearm to rotate, pulling your belly button in toward your spine, and we're using those obliques and we're getting a little bit of mobility through our thoracic spine here as we do that rotation. You can touch your ribs or you can just thread your arm under, but you're gonna feel a nice stretch in this one as well. Now make sure you're staying in that 90 degree forearm position. You're lifting that bottom hip the whole time. So you're never collapsing into your shoulder. You're staying nice and lifted here. And recover. We're gonna move on to the same exercise, other side. So just flip around. Extending the top leg, bottom knee is bent. We're gonna lift, rotate under, aiming for back ribs, and then reaching up. Now you might find one side is tighter. You can't rotate as much. That's this side for me. To get that rotation. Okay, we're moving on to our backs again. We're going to go to a reverse crunch, extending the legs and then lowering them down. So both legs come up, knees over hips, straighten the legs and then lower them, 
about 45 degrees or as far as you can without your low back lifting. So bend, straighten, and then slowly lower down. Let's keep going. Bend, extend, lower. Now your back is gonna really want to lift as you lower those legs. Press it down, pull that belly in, tight, 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 nice and controlled to the bottom. This one is really important to move slowly. And if it's too intense, you can lower, bend the legs again, and then lower down. But if you want more, you can take those legs a little bit lower. But again, respect where your body's at right now. Don't push it too far, relax. Okay, we have made it through our second of the three workouts. So that was our intermediate workout. Again, like the beginner workout, be sure to do this one until you feel really controlled, competent, and not comfortable, but you can do the exercises with a sense of confidence before you move to our advanced workout because this next one is going to be quite a bit more challenging. So I will see you back here for our next workout together. Be sure to do a few of my other postpartum workouts in conjunction with this one, especially a stretch and a foam rolling workout to help with that tightness in the legs. That is so common postpartum. So I will see you here next time for our advanced workout together.